Hi everybody, um, today we're just going to review the different methods we learned for solving quadratic equations and we're going to talk about when you can use each method and when you can't. Um, so the first method we talked about was taking the square root. Um, so this is a nice method to use and with this method, this is the one where you isolate the variable and then you take the square root of both sides. Um, there is one restriction to this. You can only use this if your equation has an x squared. Um, meaning if there is if there's also an x, um, like x squared plus something x, you cannot use. Okay? So this only works if you only have x squared. If you have an um, an additional x, you can't use this method. Um, so here's the example. So first we have to isolate our variable by adding 7 to both sides. And then we divide both sides by 4. And then we take the plus or minus square root of both sides. Um, and then you simplify if you can, but square root of 6 can't be simplified, so that's our answer. Okay, so if you do have a problem that has an x squared and an x, that's when we have to use one of our different methods. Um, so one of them is factoring. So a couple of things to remember here. You need to set your equation equal to 0. Okay, and there are restrictions to this because not everything can be factored. So I think this method um, is a good one to check because it's often easier than, and quicker than the other methods, but just remember that there are some polynomials that you simply can't factor, so this method won't work. Um, so for this example, First, we have to add 12 to both sides because we have to set our equation equal to 0. Okay, and then this is something that we can factor using magic x. Okay, and we have negative 6 and negative 2. And then we use our principle of 0 product property or zero product principle. We set each factor equal to zero separately to find our two answers. So we get x equals 6 and x equals 2. All right, um, completing the square. So this is um, the technique where we use this formula um, to find the magic number that completes our square. Um, so there are a few restrictions to this. One is there can there can't there has to be no coefficient for x squared. So if there's a number in front of your x squared, um, you'll have to either divide it out or use a different method. And I would recommend just using a different method because that can get a little bit tricky and messy. Um, another thing to consider, this isn't um, necessarily a deal breaker, but using this method is easiest when your coefficient for x is even, right? Because if you're taking your b value and you're plugging into this formula, remember, you're going to be dividing it by 2. If you have an even number, it will divide really nicely. But if you have an odd number, you'll have a fraction, and then that's when these types of problems can get a little bit messy. So if you have a choice, I would use this method only when this number is even. But you don't have to. It's just easiest when. Okay, so here's the example. Remember, we only care about these first two terms. This negative 5 does not complete our square, so we have to move it to the other side. We have to start by getting rid of it. Okay. 
Okay, now I need to figure out what number completes the square. So I use b over 2 squared, and my b value is always the number in front of x. So it's 4 over 2 squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4. So I am going to add 4 to both sides. So you always need to do the same thing to both sides of your equation. All right, from here, we're going to factor out the left side of our equation. This is just a magic x problem. So we get 2 and 2, which becomes x plus 2 squared, which equals 9. And now the way that we get rid of our square is by taking the plus or minus square root of both sides. Oops. Okay, so we have x plus 2 equals plus or minus 3. So now here's where I need to go ahead and do um, two separate um, equations because I have my plus or minus. So I'm going to move that to over here. We're going to do one scenario for the positive 3 and one scenario for the negative 3. That's why we get two answers. It's because of that plus or minus. So I get x equals 1 and x equals negative 5. There are your two answers. So make sure if your radical simplifies out all the way that you do those two scenarios because you can combine whole numbers. And the last method we talked about was the quadratic equation. Um, which is right here. So the things to remember for this one is that you have to set your equation equal to zero. And this method is nice because it always works. This is one that you don't really have to worry about. There can be coefficients in front of your x squared. They can be positive. They can be negative. You can be missing terms. You can have all three terms. This one always works. So if you're ever unsure, I would go for this method. Um, so let's try this example. You have to start by setting your equation equal to 0. So I subtracted 8 from both sides. And now I like to list out the a, b, and c values. So remember, our a value is always the number in front of x squared. B is always the number in front of your X, and C is always your number that's by itself. And then we plug it into our equation. So I like to um, really take my time and do each step, um, show out each step, and simplify only small parts at a time. So here I have negative B, which is negative 4. Be careful, it is a double negative plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So I'm going to start by um, simplifying negative negative 4. That becomes positive 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. And then I have negative 4 times negative 8, which is positive 32, all over 2. So I get 4 plus or minus the square root of 48, all over 2. So now I see that I need to simplify the square root of 48. So I'm going to factor it. Circle my groups of 2, so 2, 2. So I know that my radical becomes 4 root 3, because 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, let's keep simplifying then. So I have 4 plus or minus 
for root 3 all over 2 and I see that all three of these terms are divisible by 2 so I can simplify and say 2 plus 2 root 3 plus or minus 2 root 3 and since I can't combine numbers and radicals I leave my answer like that or you could write it as two separate answers that is fine as well but if you leave it as one I'm okay with that and that is all for the review